Hey guys, welcome to my shop. You guys like music? I know I do. And a Bluetooth speaker like this is something we're gonna mount in this shop today. Let me show you some features. Well, my favorite of all the features is the fact that this thing is up on the wall and that is fantastic. I also have electronic storage that will charge them as well, including earbuds and these lav mics. Also, there is a, well, a little hidden feature right here. You're gonna have to watch to see just how it all comes together. Okay, before we get started, a little overview about the elephant in the room and what in the world am I doing with a big old speaker like that? I'm gonna tell you, the, well, the little speakers just weren't cutting it. I mean, I even had a Bose speaker in here at one point and it was good, but it's not this. Um, <laughs> I've been a musician since I was 12 years old. Drums, guitar, stuff like that. And I'll probably never play on this channel. Actually, I played a little bit uh, in one video, but I'll never tell you which one it is. Um, Fact is, you don't get sound like this from anything other than something like this. And you can't listen to it full blast, it will blow you out of the water, but it is really nice to have kind of like a concert feel while you're in the shop. I'm not a big earbud guy. I mean, I love earbuds for other things, um, doing yard work, but in the shop when I'm doing the table saw or any kind of power tools, they're too isolating to me. I just don't like how it is. And that's just personal preference for me. So we decided to put this up on the wall. Now, being a maker, I just wanted to put this up on the wall. That was it, make a stand for it. But it snowballed into this. Now this thing, had I had drawn this out with all the capabilities that it has, I would have come up with a very different design. But I just kept going and putting it together and cobbling it together with pieces of material that I had here in the shop. And that's what we got. So you're gonna join me on this journey. I really appreciate you being here. Let's dive in and uh, hope you enjoy. So first of all, I like to use scrap for a lot of projects and this one is no exception. In fact, I didn't go to the store for anything about this project except for, well, the speaker itself. But we're gonna cut down some scraps here. These are pieces of Baltic birch, three quarters of an inch. They're gonna be cut down to five by five pieces. And then I'm gonna find the center of all of them. You're thinking, you know, Chris, you don't have to actually put an entire line through the whole piece. You could just do a little X like that and you'd be good to go. And then you might be thinking, well, since you set up a stop block and a jig on the drill press, why did you even find the center of all of them? Well, it's just what I did, okay? So we're gonna drill a hole in one of them that's gonna have a diameter of about an inch and an eighth. And then we're gonna drill another three holes in the other three pieces that has a diameter just a little bit bigger. And all that will become clear very soon. So to glue these together, I'm just gonna set up some 90 degree stop blocks on my armor tool bench, put the glue in, tack it in place with some brads, and yep, first mistake of the project, here we go. So that clip you just saw me joining these two pieces together was completely wrong. There are three pieces that have the larger diameter hole, and this is them for the pipe to go in. And this is the pipe, uh, this is the piece that's smaller for, well, when I'm gonna try to actually thread some threads in here with that pipe. You'll see all that in just a second, but you're gonna notice that, uh, yeah, I made a mistake. I actually glued these together, stapled them together, or brand nailed them together, and I had to rip them apart. Didn't film it because I was kind of upset about it, but moving forward, let's go. Okay, now that we're gonna proceed with a little more caution, I'm gonna glue all three of these pieces together with the correct diameter. And you're gonna see here, it's gonna fit into a galvanized steel pipe. And we've got a little bit of a loose fit, but that's kind of by design, and more about that in just a second. But first, I've gotta cut this pipe to length. And how I'm gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna mark exactly how it's gonna go into the speaker, and then where it's gonna go into the wood, and then make a mark bring it to the vise. Now, I love having a mobile vise in the shop. That way, in case I need to cut metal like this where I'm gonna make a lot of sparks, I can get it away from the walls and away from anything flammable. Pretty nice feature. So once that piece is cut, we bring it over to the disc sander to get rid of any burrs and kind of put a chamfer on the edge, making it nice and soft to the touch. Okay, now back to the vise. We're gonna take that smaller hole in that piece of plywood there. We're gonna coat the galvanized pipe with some paste wax, and then we're gonna try to thread our own threads through that piece of plywood, and my goodness, it actually works. I wasn't really sure how I was gonna get this thing to be really stable inside a housing of wood, but this is gonna work really well. I'm still not quite sure that maybe just this one joint is good enough, so the other three pieces of plywood that you saw me put together are gonna to be put to use here. 
And I want to thank Total Boat for helping me make this video. You guys know that I use their products quite a bit in a lot of my videos, and this is no exception. I'm using something a bit new today. This is Fixo, a, an epoxy basically that comes together through the nozzle that sets up really fast and is super strong, and it's perfect for applications like this. Of course, I've got a link in the description, everything Total Boat. Check it out, save yourself some money with my coupon code. And I want to thank Total Boat for helping me with this portion of the video. And a little squeeze out within any glue up is a good sign. And I'm gonna tell you this product too, the nozzle, yes, you throw away, but you then recap the Fixo, put its cap back on, and they will send you multiple nozzles for multiple uses. So you don't gotta worry about the fact that you just messed up one nozzle when you used it one time. Now we undo it and this thing is as rigid as a brick. Oh my goodness, it's so solid. Over to the disc sander, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a shape here because the Bluetooth speaker is gonna sit on this and it's gonna be able to articulate left and right and having this kind of rounded over edge is gonna help it do that. So at this point, I'm cutting up pieces just to make a small frame so I can then mount the actual thing we just made so the speaker can get on the wall. But then I thought to myself, why don't we give it a little decorative touch? Why not? put a curve in it and take it over to the bandsaw. I put two pieces together and now we have that curve. And I'm thinking, well, this kind of looks like a little bit of a cabinet. You know, when I put this thing together, I got a big use of space in the middle. I could probably use it for something. And that's where this all came from, was building this just kind of by the seat of my pants, going at it. And for those of you that think there's any blowout in that thinner material, there is none, thank you. And then we're gonna take some marks. And of course, I've got some electronics going in here. And I think, well, I gotta put a little, you know, a groove or a place for those wires to be fed through in the back. So we take care of that with a jigsaw. And I wanna reinforce this again with some screws. So I'm using these kind of flush trim screws as well. So now I gotta put the back on because I need something to attach the cleat to. And this process goes very similarly. Tack it in place, glue and screws, making sure everything is as strong as possible. Oh boy, yeah, uh, I shouldn't have gone in the middle. <laughs> I gotta redo it. Something like that happens every project. I mean, we're human and that has five letters, but so does Maker. Oh yeah. Okay, really glad I tested this. I just put one screw up under here. And this, I never knew, let me show you this. This is pretty crazy. Oh, I would have never picked up that this hole was off center. I never would have picked that up had I not attested it. So before I firmly attached this thing, it's just one screw in there. Now I can make the adjustment. So with everything lined up, I tack a few pieces in place and that's gonna provide proper alignment for the speaker to be in the middle of this cabinet. Now, on to putting some braces on the bottom and instead of making these curve, well, I figured I'd leave them straight because it gives itself an opportunity to have more storage. I'm gonna make a drawer down there and in order to put a drawer in there, I'm gonna try my hand at making my own dados here on the table saw. Simply just move your fence over until you get the proper fit, sand them down a little bit, and we repeat that process on both of those. You're gonna see me install one of them here. Attack it in place and of course go back with some screws. And I think sometimes these projects can kind of speak to you about what they kind of want to be. Again, I was just going with a mount. That was it, nothing else. And this is kind of what came of it, pretty neat. Now we gotta build a simple little drawer Basically just gonna construct it with glue and brads and then I'm gonna put a bottom on it. That's only a quarter inch piece of material. We're gonna sand it all flush. And then I'm gonna cut some little strips of plywood to become the guides or the rails that are gonna ride in those dados too. You're gonna see me cut these here. And we're just gonna simply line them up just how we need them with a spacer. 
align that spacer up to the bottom of the drawer. Use the CA glue and regular glue trick. As the CA glue works as a clamp and the real glue there, the, the wood glue kind of gives it the really strong hold. And I repeat that process on the other side with the same spacer block using the same technique. Now we got ourselves a couple little drawer slides or drawer glides, if you will, but I need a drawer face. So with some of that leftover walnut from a previous project that I had made my own veneers, I go ahead and attach two together with some CA glue, little blue tape trick. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, glue, CA glue. And again, these projects are really cool where you just kind of follow your nose. I really love these. And I really wanna hear about a conversation in the comments do you plan most of your projects or do you get out there and build something and kind of see what happens? I am curious for sure. And if we've measured everything properly, we should have a pretty snug fit and I'm very pleased with how this has turned out. Now to make some type of drawer pull, we're going to find the center. I took a piece of Baltic over to the disc sander and made this little trapezoidal shape. And now I've got a little reference mark to go ahead and then tack it in place with some CA glue. And that's all I'm gonna need. There's not gonna be a whole bunch in here, so I figured that's just strong enough. So with a clamp holding everything in place, we're gonna attach the mount to the base with some two inch screws, four of them to be exact. And that's gonna give us a strong enough hold, I truly do believe. And so once I got the mount up there, I thought, well, that's a little unsightly. We can cover that up a little bit. So I cut a few pieces of Baltic to be on the sides and I'm gonna cut a piece of, well, something a little bit fancier on the front. We're gonna put something here. I'm thinking maybe a piece of walnut. Well, it's been nice and sanded down already. I did that off camera. Nobody likes to see a whole bunch of sanding on film anyway. And we're gonna glue and tack this in place with some 23 gauge pin nails. And the same is gonna go for the bottom of this cabinet. We're gonna take a piece of walnut and we're gonna carve out a little bit. And then I'm gonna just gonna use my random orbit sander to put a really nice round over on it, taking my time. And this is gonna turn out pretty cool. We're gonna go back over to the piece and tack it in place. You guessed it, a little bit of glue and that same 23 gauge pin nail, it really does come in handy. You're gonna see how I'm gonna install it just now. Once it's all set to go, drive those pins in and let the glue do its thing. So a little bit of hand sanding as well. And this piece is raised up a little bit because it's gonna allow something to, well, stay in place. And I'm gonna explain here just what we're gonna okay, do. So I'm, at, <laughs> so I'm at the point now where I need to test the angle that this wireless charging play. I guess now would be a good time to mention I'm gonna do wireless phone charging as a feature. Nothing's been routed into this yet. Um, and this is how I'm going to test the angle. Basically, I'm gonna put this in here. I got this piece of blue tape so I can find the angle in the middle and then route out where the wireless charger needs to be. Camera battery died at the wrong time, but we're back up and running and I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna make this in two different passes. The first one, a bit shallower. Once I set the depth to the wireless charging plate, I just take my time. I go really slow here, no guide and I just kind of carve out this just by hand. Now I need a channel and show you that my forearm is gonna be there, a channel to where the cord is gonna go. And I didn't really adhere that cord as best I could and that's gonna really be problematic later and you're gonna see, oh boy. So with a piece of veneer on here, I need to test the functionality. Is it gonna work? Up until now, this was a theory and I'm so glad this worked. So moving forward, using some Super 77, this is essentially contact cement in spray form. We're gonna spray this down. We're gonna wait about five minutes and then we're gonna attach the veneer to the base encapsulating that wireless charger. I mean, the thing was like 35 bucks. If it doesn't work, hey, that's what I'm out. But we're gonna clamp it down, giving it a nice pressure for about an hour or so. And now we've got a nice piece of walnut covering everything up. Using a straight edge, we're gonna clean up the veneers. Be careful of that cord, okay? <laughs> I didn't cut it, trust me. And now we got a nice piece here, but it wasn't quite big enough. I bought these veneers from Rockler. They come in a set with all kinds of different woods. And it just so happens that it was a little shorter than I wanted, but I need to raise up the level of this piece by another thickness of a veneer. So we've done that and I mistakenly just burned right through it with some sandpaper. But either way, I'm gonna put a small walnut frame on the edges, kind of give it a nice look. And I think that's gonna look good in the final result. 
So again, nothing real structural here. CA glue is all you need. Let that activator dry, should be good to go. But look at this. Oh my goodness, would you look at that? The veneer came up. Okay, so my sander inadvertently hit this veneer and tore this piece off. Gotta fix it, check it out. Here's what I'm gonna do. So this black CA glue from Starbond really lends itself well to blend with walnut. Quite honestly, I didn't need to do this, but it's gonna be underneath where you're probably never gonna see it. But you know, it's nice to know that it's fixed and that we're taking care of it. And a little activator and you're good to go. Show you what it's gonna look like. Done. So now it's time to place the actual unit for the wireless charger and, oh my gosh. Definitely should have put some hot glue in there to keep that stable. I'm kicking myself right now. And so much so I didn't even film this, but I did the best I could with some CA glue. But I think initially I'm gonna go ahead and put another piece of walnut on the top, kind of frame it out. And quite frankly, that actually looks pretty good. So yeah, happy accident for sure. So to get this at the right angle, I'm using some blue tape as kind of a handle to help me push it into place. I'm then gonna make a mark here. It's kind of hard to see, couldn't get the camera up in there, but I make a mark exactly where I want that thing to be. And then extend that mark down by half the thickness of the tray. All that makes sense. I drill that hole out on one side and one side only is all I'm gonna need. I'm gonna go ahead and countersink that hole, bring the shelf back in with the wireless charger, continue that hole through it, and then hand install a flush trim screw. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I install the wireless charger in this unit. A little unorthodox, but I think it's gonna work. So let's test it out. Moment of truth. Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So now it's time to install some feet in case this thing is ever going to rest on a surface instead of being up on the wall. And we're going to use some Total Boats wood sealer to go ahead and pop this grain a little bit, flood that in there, get it really looking nice. And then I'm going to come back and actually sand the entire piece to 220 as well. Because for a final finish, well, I'm going to try something a little bit unique, at least to a piece that's not fine furniture. We're going to use some of this hard wax oil called Odie's oil. This stuff is pretty cool. I've used it on some tabletops and it's worked well. And you install it with a, yep, you install it with this white, I don't know, what do you call these things? scotch bright pads, I guess. A little light abrasive pads and buff it out and everything looks so good. Continue this process on to the entire piece, front, back, left, and right. Even the Baltic birch gets a little bit of love. And once you install it, you can just buff it out with a rag and it looks so good. Now, time for the cleat. So for this example, I'm not gonna be using glue. I'm gonna show you what I think is the strongest method of installing cleats to a back of a piece with only mechanical fasteners. And what you do is you take two screws about an inch apart all the way to the right and left, which allows you to penetrate through the backing material and the side of the cabinet. Then at the top, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna angle them a little bit upwards and go into the top of the cabinet as well, which I think gives you the maximum amount of strength. This speaker is about 50 pounds and it has a lot of forward weight to it. This is gonna be plenty strong and the big reveal is coming up. I also wanna bring your attention to the opposite side of the wall. You see those doubled up screws every 12 inches in the cleats, in the three quarter inch plywood that is in the studs. That's gonna be your maximum strength as well. All these steps will give you the strongest hold possible for this system. Cable management. Okay, here's the reveal I promised. Now I have a list of all things French cleat in a playlist linked down below. If you like this video, perhaps you would like some of my others on this topic. Definitely when you finish up here, go check that down below. And thank you so much for watching everybody. And here are my final thoughts. And so there we are all done this project. 
pretty crazy. I, I don't know why I have such a massive Bluetooth speaker. I, you know what? It did something where it took us away from concerts. And um, I've been a musician since I was 12. I'll probably never play too much on this channel, but um, there's something about hearing live music that just really it resonates with me. And to have the music I love basically broadcast through this massive speaker is pretty awesome. And I'm really glad to have it incorporated into such a cool, <laughs> cool stand in the shop. Uh, it really does epitomize what it's like to be a maker, where you just kind of follow your nose. Like I said in the beginning, this project, it, not, it didn't go off the rails, but it kind of did. This was never meant to turn out this way, and I'm so glad it did. And I hope you guys really enjoyed the ride. And um, yeah, hopefully it gets you out there into your shops and inspired to really just think of a small idea, and it maybe, just maybe could turn into something even bigger. And uh yeah, tell me what you think about the size of the speaker. <laughs> it's so silly, but I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you on my next video. Until then, y'all be safe. Take care.